joining us. So welcome or welcome back to Faith from Friday. Uh, for this case, this is a pretty a pretty well known case. Uh, it's actually gotten um pretty international coverage, and apparently, unfortunately, this murder has actually been turned into a meme. And so while um you may have seen the meme and may have not known the origins of it, I would like to be respectful because there is a child who is no longer with us because of our killer. If you remember um hearing about the meme and the merch that came out like while it happened because it just happened a pretty while back, definitely let me know. But of course, try to be respectful because even though this case did take place over in a whole other country, you never know who exactly knew the victim, who was related to the victim that might see this video one day. So that being said, I'm quit on rambling. Sources down as always. And let's go and get started. So we're going to start off with uh, Nat Simi. She was born November 21st, 1992. Her father would apparently have a stroke when she was two. And so the grandmother would help uh, raise her. Didn't say what the, uh, gra the father died because, you, of course, you can't die from a stroke. But I would imagine that if he lived... Because, again, this is, it didn't specify whether he lived or died. He would not have been the same, according to people. Some people have had a stroke. So, that's probably why the grandmother stepped in and take care of him. So, so, that's, I guess, that's for over discussion until it's verified. So, then apparently, Nasumi would apparently create a website or join a website. Again, the sources are different here. And this is where, apparently, she meets classmate Saitomi. And Saitomi, it doesn't give a date about to her. But apparently, she, her mother died when she's eight, and then that left her father a widow of three children. So she had two siblings. So the two of them would actually go to the same school and were on the same basketball team. Apparently, however, Nasumi apparently had to quit because her grades were failing. So I guess you had to, um, it's not like over here where, oh, you have to be passing in order to play. I guess like her parents were like, oh, you're failing. You don't get to play basketball. So then Nasumi had apparently even attacked a classmate, but I guess it wasn't uh, considered that serious because it was kind of like um, scooped under the rug, essentially. And so on the, in May of 2004, apparently, Nasumi would apparently find out that Satomi was talking crap about her with other girls. And so then apparently she, the next day she found out that it was happening again. And then apparently she left a message to Satomi basically saying that I'm going to kill you. So on the fateful day of June 1st, 2004, um, Nasumi came with a box cutter to school and basically, basically went to a classroom and made sure the blinds were closed. That way there was like pretty much complete darkness in there. And so then get somehow gets Satomi to come with her to said classroom with the blinds closed and nobody else in there lights off everything. And then ask her, do you want to put on a blindfold? And she's like, nah. So then Nasumi takes the box cutter, pretty much cuts her multiple times, and then cuts Satomi's throat. So then Nasumi apparently wants to make sure that she's dead before she leaves because I don't need you like living and telling that it was me. Because you know, then I'm going to go down, as she should have. And so. She then kicks her in the head, like, at least once to make sure that, I guess, like, she was actually dead. So then once she was satisfied that Satomi was actually dead, she proceeds to leave and go back to lunch like nothing happened with her classmates. Her classmates see her in blood, because you can imagine she done cut this girl up pretty bad. And, of course, they're thinking that it's her blood at first, because, you know, understandably. And she proceeds to tell them, oh, this ain't my blood. So then they realize, they're like, wait, so who did you attack? Because, like, wait, wait a minute. So then, of course, police are called. So I guess from what it seems like, it said all the other grades got to go home. But because these girls are in sixth grade, if you are in sixth grade, you have to stay here. And every single sixth grader has to be questioned to figure out what, like, what the hell is going on. Because by this time, of course, they found Satoma's body. So then, of course, um, not too many, she pretty much confesses immediately and apparently refuses to eat. So as you can imagine, with the, uh, the, the two girls beefing online, this apparently made parents pretty much like worry as to what type of material the kids are seeing online. For her to think that killing somebody is a good idea. Because, again, these are sixth graders we're talking about here. So, then, in September 2004, she is sentenced to be institutionalized. So, I guess, like, jail for, like, two years. And then another two years is added in 2006. So, then, in October 2005, uh, both girls are actually supposed to graduate elementary school. Because, you know, they're in sixth grade. I guess, apparently, the cutoff for elementary school over there was the school they were going to was sixth grade. So, then, some people were pissed that both of them got a certificate. Now... So they told me, obviously, she's deceased, but I assume, I hope they weren't mad at that. Because, you know, like a post-humorous, um, I don't want to call it a diploma, but I guess certificate. They were pissed that Nate Nasumi had got it because, you know, you're the reason why she's even dead. And so, um, basically, the government tried to justify it by saying, like, look, she's going to come back into society and she needs at least this to be able to start her life somewhat over again. So then this is where the name of uh, Nevada Tan uh, weirdly came from. Because apparently, for some weird reason, there was, she... Our killer had worn apparently a sweatshirt with Nevada on the sweatshirt in a picture, like one of the few pictures that we have is confirmed to be her, right? And so the German band would name themselves Nevada Tan after her. And then there was another band ca called Fecal Matter Incorporated. 
and they had an album named after Nevada Tan and other g- Japanese girls who have also committed murder. So in 2008, she is released. Uh, I guess I want to say, I guess she was on parole because it says she was fully released in 2013. Her family, of course, moves out of town due to, I guess, I imagine shame because your daughter already committed murder. And it said that she is now living under a new identity. And so another crazy thing about this, remember how I said in the beginning that this case actually eventually became a meme? So apparently the University of Nevada started getting like a spike of people wanting to buy like their sweatshirts. And I guess, of course, they were flattered at first because, you know, who wouldn't be? Because, you know, we make it, we make it business. But once they found out that there was a girl who had gotten really murdered and this is the reason why y'all want our sweatshirts, oh yeah, we're going to stop this. As they should, as as they did, and and so apparently people were dressing like her for Halloween, and apparently, like I said, there were people making drawings of her, drawings of what you were probably seen at social media at one point in your life. Because I know I definitely had, but I didn't know the origin behind it. I just thought it was just a regular little anime. So now knowing the context behind that picture is definitely pretty haunting when you really think about it. Um, I so yeah, that's pretty much what I could publicly find on the case of Nevada Tan. So if anybody, like I said, if anybody knew of the case, you knew of the killer, the victims, definitely let me know. Um, do you think that she should definitely should have been in jail longer? Uh, what do you think Satomi will probably be doing if she was still alive today? It's, and do you think that kids need to be watched more safely, more regarding what they're doing on the internet, so stuff like this doesn't happen? And so with that being said, uh, like I said, that's all I have for this case. Uh, subscribe for more fair females. I cover Facebook three times a week. Subscribe for more fair females. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.